Hey, this is episode 2 of making a logger in C++ and in this episode we're going to be implementing file logging along with some refactoring and also timestamps. So here is where we left off and as you can see in all log uh, functions this code is actually kind of the same except for the priority used and the priority indicator used and uh, in the previous episode i decided not to put this in a separate function but since this code grew and it's gonna become even bigger in this episode first thing that i'm gonna do is make a separate function for it so let's make a private function private static function uh, we'll call it a log or let's call it from lowercase uh, because here as you can see our logger api is uppercase right and since it is uppercase let's also change this function to kind of uppercase style, I don't know, uppercase camel, I guess it's called or whatever. And, but this, since it's private, uh, we'll leave it a lowercase. And, um, I'll grab that. And along with message and arguments, we're also gonna take a log priority so here we'll check for message priority and we're also gonna take char call it message priority string uh, and we'll pass it here here now we can just simply call log and give it critical like that and critical priority and then give it a message and args and we'll do the same for every other So yeah, now each log function, actual public uh, log function calls a private log function where we actually print stuff. And so here we're also gonna uh, output to the file. First, let's have static file output and static. initialize those since they're static by default we initialize it to false and file to zero so it's null oh and also let's have const char file that we want to output to uh, it's also gonna be zero by default so now functions uh, that uh, for uh, file output file logging configuration uh, enable file um, and 
will have overloaded function with constructor um, file path. So basically, if we if the user of logger just calls this function enable file output it's gonna we're gonna specify file path ourselves but also the user can specify a custom file path first let's check if file is zero because if it's not that it means that we the user already specified the file so we have to close that file f close file now we specify a file file path to be log.txt and now we open that file or create it if it doesn't exist we want to append to the end of the file if it already exists, so we are going to use a to for append. Let's check if f open was successful. If it wasn't, it returns uh, zero. So if file equals to zero, if the pointer to the file equals to zero, then we then let's print failed to open file at actually now that I think about it we don't actually need file output boolean I think basically that's it. Now for enable file output it's gonna differ only in this new file path. And since it kind of is the same, we're gonna put this into a separate function. Set file output. Okay. Or let's call it enable file output. Oh, if it doesn't e equal to zero. So here, if file doesn't equal to zero, then we close. If it doesn't equal to zero, then we close. Uh, previously opened file. Don't need that. And, yeah. Also, let's create static void free file uh, in which we close the file and set file to zero. And so yeah, those are private. And here we'll just call enable file output. And here enable file output. So So now, as you can see, our API functions, the functions that a user calls directly, are all very simple. They just contain calls to the internal implementation functions. Also, let's make a static void close or close file out put or yeah, close file output, let's call it that, because we need to close the file, so we're going to call here free file. So 
the user or the logger will be required if they use file output they will be required to close file output uh, when they stop using logger and i'm actually gonna make the third uh, episode where i will uh, refactor this whole class into a singleton and then we can call uh, this kind of close file output in the destructor now let's actually implement file logging we're gonna do this in the log so if file it's gonna be true if file output is enabled and working oh let's move this here then we just log to the file and the difference between and we can do this exactly the same way just put f in front for file so f print f so print to the file and here i'm gonna put uh, our file okay so since we're using a uh, kind of c style uh, file output we have to specify crt secure no warnings i think you can specify this in program let's try this out and see if that works uh, crt secure no warnings yeah okay it works uh, but if you're using visual studio then you can specify it in here um, let me see cc plus plus preprocessor and here you can add uh, this oh this so let's add logger enable file output when the program ends we want to close file output oh i guess that because I put this in front let's now test this okay so yeah now it has log so the file output is working let's say logs Let's create a folder and call it logs and in logs let's put log1.txt let's test this out okay well, now let's uh, implement timestamps we're gonna do this uh, by using ctime so std time and if we put zero here or null uh, that means that it's gonna take current time std tm timestamp timestamp So uh, we're gonna use this object to format uh, the date into a string uh, with string of time. By the way, yeah, Lo uh, local time, not C time. Local time. Okay, let's use this one since we're gonna use this buffer on every call let's make it static or mm, it's a template so i don't well let's leave it as a local variable just for now we'll probably make it a private uh, member A 
here and let's do the same for the file output f printf file Here we go. Mm, it all works. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.